Hello guys and gals, how's it going? Screezilla here, and um, no gameplay in today's footage, it's just a bit of a talk. Now, I was watching one of Fly Daily's videos today, or Tank Daily as he can sometimes be known, um, talking about the possible removable, uh, sorry, the possible removal of some paper tanks. The main one being the Tiger 2 10.5 centimeter. Now, the talk is that they're going to be removing these tanks from the tech tree. If you own it, you get to keep it. If you don't own it, you can never unlock it again. And the reason behind it is the fact that this tank never existed, there was never an actual true prototype made. But this causes problems, because with the German tech tree 7.0, it would completely kill 7.0 gameplay for Germany. There's no other vehicles. They need to add something in. They need to add other vehicles down or change things. Because also, if they remove the Tiger 10.5 centimeter, they have to remove the Tiger. Sorry, the Panther too, because this was never made. There was no real prototype made of it. Um, there, there was later war modifications of it. Yes. Um, there was some French variants that had the um, the mechanisms on them, things like that, but they weren't the German tanks. And, you know, this was a prototype, again, you know, in that sort of prototype phasing and really didn't exist kind of thing, especially with the 88mm. Um, so we lose the Panther II and the Tiger to 105 centimeter. But where do you end with this? Because the Waffenträger shouldn't be there. This didn't really exist either. Again, this was mainly a paper tank. There was the um, the Waffenträger Grasshopper, um, which is the 10.5cm uh, um, gun carriage, and basically it was a artillery piece that could be placed. Um, the tank would drive in and then remove its turret basically, put it down and then it could be used as artillery and then the tank would go again and have a turret, say. Um, but the Waffenträger, um, the Henschel Waffenträger, it's not a vehicle that truly existed. Again, it's more of a paper tank than anything. Um, if you start doing this, then you're going to have to remove a lot of vehicles because there are lots of vehicles that were not built and they were purely fictional slash paper vehicles um it's gonna get very <sighs> dirty very iffy now the biggest problems are going to be for the japanese and french tech trees because the japanese tech tree has lots of vehicles i mean the heavy tank number six was never never even made it to japan it was never built it was never made it was purely fictional it was pure paper um it would have been made, and yeah, it would have existed, but it didn't. There was no existence of it. The the bits that were going to go over to Japan never made it to Japan. And then you've got things like the um, uh, da -da 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 -da, the Ho Ri. The Ho Ri was never really made. There was no actual physical makeup of this. There was some wooden mockups, but that was about it. Um, there are so many vehicles that just were purely paper tanks from the Japanese tech tree. And that's... Sorry, my phone's just pinging there. Um, but that's going to cause a lot of problems. The French as well. Um, the... I think it was the C.A. Lorraine. was never actually made or it wasn't really used. There, there, was, there was paper mock-ups of a lot of these tanks. And a lot of these were purely paper mock-ups and not actually built more than a um, wooden stage of fabrication. They weren't built as a proper tank. There was mock-ups made. That was about it. You know, so where do we stop with this? So, in short, I don't think it's a very good idea. You can also look at the Russian tech tree. Um, now, the Russians did tend to build a single prototype of many of their vehicles. But many of them are just a single prototype vehicle. The IS-6, for instance, had two prototypes made. Uh, neither of them worked, and they went on to the IS-7. It's the same as the IS-5, you know. There's a lot of issues in that. You know, you could easily say, well, those tanks shouldn't be here then. Um, 
it just makes problems the same as the ISU um, I think it's the 152 even you know that was never really made there was a prototype sort of made but it was not there wasn't much done with it so it does start to become problematic because if you start taking out vehicles that didn't really exist the um, Dicker Max, I think it was, or it was a Stuart Emile. Um, again, there was like one prototype made of it, didn't really do anything. Uh, it was just there for a test run sort of thing. There, there were a lot of things that had that stage to them. Um, I don't even think the SLA 16 actually got made as a prototype. I think it was just on paper, the diesel engine variant. You know, so it just really does become problematic because where do you stop um if they're adding in new vehicles to replace them i don't know what they're going to add in there the e100 is another vehicle that was pure fiction um although the chassis was technically made the rest of it wasn't you know so again you know the e100 although it's not really in the game it is just a um you know it's a reward vehicle but still if they're removing these vehicles then they shouldn't be there the mouse again was a pure real fictional prototype but yes they did make two of them uh, but they were very much prototypes and things like that you know it just gets very problematic and we start getting into the realm of well okay this really didn't exist they didn't really make it the kpz 70 for example Yes, there was the prototypes, but again, it was there was a lot of paper prototypes in this sort of area. Um, I think even the Leopard 2K was, again, a lot of a pure paper prototype, things like that. So you have problems there with some of the newer vehicles. You know, where do you stop with this? Where do you call a cutoff? I know that the 10 centimeter Tiger is pure paper prototype, but then there are so many vehicles that are just that. Um, that there was no real solid build for. They did have some test beds for some of these vehicles, but they weren't really used or ever going to be used, and they just had, like, pure test beds for them. Um, sorry, I'm just browsing through, just seeing if anything else jumps out to me as I'm scrolling through for things that just purely are fictional and didn't exist and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, it just becomes very problematic because where do you call the cutoff line and it's going to make a huge gap and as I said the Germans can't afford it because the Tiger 10 centimeter as much as that gun is just ridiculously good it's not an overpowered tank it gets beaten up a lot because it always gets up to 7.7 .7. you know the Tiger 210.5 was actually meant to have stabilizers uh, the gun should be stabilized and it should be an autoloader um, Sorry, I didn't mean to click that. Um, they were actually, when they were going to make it, it was going to be an auto-loading vehicle with a stabilised gun and stabilised gun sight. Um, so, do we change that? Do we make it as it was meant to be? Or do we keep it balanced? You know, it, it's not that much of an issue having that. It's pretty underpowered as it is and underwhelming as it is when you look at other 7.0 vehicles, um, most of which are more of a post-war design. You know, if we look at 7.0 in the British tech tree, for instance, um, we've got the Centurion Mark 10, you know, which is something that was really more post-war than anything else. The Conway, um, you know, Conway is a bit more of a conventional design. The Vickers MBT, again, it, it's very much a post-World War II design. It, it's, you know, it, it's much better than what is currently there. If we look at the um, Japanese, you know, the Type 61, again, a very post-war design. This was a tank designed in the 60s, I think, off the top of my head. The STA, again, was a tank designed later on, you know. And these are just much better than that Tiger. I mean, heck, we've even got an ATGM, and it's a terrible ATGM, but it's an ATGM at 7.0. Uh, the French, for example, with 7.0, well, they haven't really got a 7.0 lineup, but you've got the AMX 1390, and that's it. But, again, it, it's more of a... Um, 
later on, you know, I think the 1390 was developed in the 70s, off the top of my head again, or the 60s, you know, it's not a war design, whereas the Tiger 10.5 is a design that was floated around in early World War Two. you know, it, it was fought about in, like, 1943. America, you've got the M46, you've got the T32, you've got the T95, um... The Ontos, you know, things that are very post-war, you know, at that 7.0 area. Um, the M46 Tiger, you know, these are Korean War, you know, vehicles. They're not, they're, they're very late World War Two vehicles, yes, but it just really mess up the German meta. I mean, the best tank at the moment is the M47 um, in the German sort of 7.0-ish lineup, And it's not even a German tank. You know, it's really going to affect them if you start removing these things. Because, as I say, if you remove the Tiger 10.5, you're pretty much going to have to remove the Panther 2 for the same reasoning. Um, so, yeah, not a fan of that idea. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, let me know as well what sort of tanks you would expect to be removed in this as well. Um, you know, it, as I said, there's a lot of vehicles in there that are pretty much just paper or wooden mock-ups. So, they really yeah that i think that i don't think they can really remove the tiger 10.5 without causing a massive backlash all right guys until next time this is screezy all right and i would recommend checking out mr fly's video as well it's a good video he plays the tiger 10.5 um so you get some good video action of that as well all right guys until next time this is screezy bye bye